Hey everyone, welcome back to Homegrown Passion. Today we are going to dive into strawberry cultivation and the way we do it here on the farm with Beto buckets. So stay tuned. So it's April 4th in Ohio. These are the strawberry plants I had last year for 2023. Cut them back in the middle of the winter and look at how wonderful they're doing. For those of you new here to the Beto Buckets, they're an incredible hydroponic system tool that allows you greater control of what your plants uptake for their nutrients. So the main parts of the Beto Bucket system is actually the bucket itself, and we get these at Crop King. They don't have them listed on their can uh, catalog, so you do have to call them. They're located in Lodi, Ohio. So you have the buckets, you have your growing medium, and you also have your plants and your nutrients. So earlier this year, in a video I did, I think it was back in January, I showed you guys what I wanted at auction, which was a huge pallet of peat moss and a huge pallet of perlite, which is perfect because that's the medium I grow, used here for my strawberries. It's half perlite and half peat moss. And the reason that I use that is you want the soil light enough because strawberry roots need a lot of oxygen, but they still like to be compacted a little bit, so it's a good mixture of the two. Setting up the Beto buckets is pretty straightforward. You have the buckets that have wings, and we have a uh, fence post here that we use to hang them on. Did some saw horses, got everybody hung up, put the growing medium in the buckets, and then we took a drip tape and laid it just along the top of the buckets all the way down through the row. I do have one row that I'm using grow bags. For the grow bags, we actually weave the uh, drip tape inside each of the grow bags. So that took a little bit of time, but it, was, it worked out really well. And then we set up our dositron system. We have three different dositrons. We have one for the macronutrients, one for the micronutrients, and one for the pH adjust. And we get them all put together, fill up our tanks, hook up at the timers, and the system's ready to go. So we all know the best way to get sweet, juicy strawberries is having the right nutrients for them. I do have a formula that was based on my source water with my macro and micronutrients and of course my pH adjust. And you want to run your EC at 1.2 and your pH at 5.5 to 6.0. That seems to be the sweet spot for the strawberries. And you want to make sure your plants don't dry out or get too wet because they're very, very sensitive plants. They like to have everything right in the middle. And you know, a good way to check to see if your plants have dried out overnight is when you first turn on the water, you know, to fertilize them, get the nutrient water going. If it starts dripping out right away, you know the growing medium got too dry overnight. So I, earlier I talked about our mix between the peat moss and the perlite being 50-50. And the reason that I do that is because we water four times a day, nine, 12, three, and six. And this way the plants retain the moisture they need throughout the day. Another crucial component of strawberry maintenance is pruning. If you get yellow leaves, cut them off because that takes away energy from the plant. And if you have brand new plants, you want to make sure that they have five leaves on them before you let them flower because you want to make sure the crown gets big enough in order to support the fruit and runners cut them off they're a pain in the butt one year i let them grow and they got onto the ground here in the high tunnel they grew all over the place but what they also did is they hid spider mites and aphids and white flies it was terrible so you want to make sure you keep your airflow so cut off all the runners because they also take energy away from the main plant and you don't get nice big strawberries now the plants that i have here are from last year i was able to overwinter them so the crown is big enough that I'm able to let the, the flowers come on here and get some fruit. But I'm going to monitor them because if I see some little clusters of flowers, I'm going to cut those off. Because what happens is you're going to get little tiny strawberries. You want to have nice big fruit for sale. So I do have 500 more strawberry plants coming. I want to do another row in this area that I'm standing because there's a lot of space here. So I might as well do something productive with it. And also, some of the plants didn't overwinter for me. So I'm going to go through, pull these out and replace them with brand new plants. So I learned from experience to only put three plants in each one of the Beto buckets. The first year I did it, I put five and six and my production was way down. And last year I put three and I got beautiful strawberries. Now I know this bucket looks like there's more than three plants in there, but that's actually three two-year-old plants. So that's something to remember. You don't want to overcrowd your strawberry plants. Give them some room to breathe and grow. So I'm happy with the way my strawberry plants are progressing so far. I'll keep you guys updated and hopefully I'll be getting some fruit here soon. And if you like my video, please like it and subscribe. And like always, leave me questions, comments, and suggestions down below. And we'll see you guys next video.